why going faster than light leads to time paradoxes. To travel to the moon and return in three seconds, you must circle the globe seven times in one second. Why rush through the galaxy's starry systems in a few hours? When we reach the speed of light, we will be able to travel at such incredible speeds. Even if you sit at the helm of the brand new faster than light spaceship, strange and unsettling things will begin to happen to it before it reaches its peak. And when it does exceed the speed of light, you will regret it. How did scientists manage to go even faster than that? And why won't they want you to travel at almost as fast as light and will hate you if you beat at speed? We'll be able to fly to our Mars colonies in 10 minutes in the future. No scientific theory prevents humans from reaching half the speed of light, or 150,000 kilometers per second. So what may be the issue? For starters, it will appear strange. Actually, I'd want to ask you to step away from your screen for your own safety. The Massachusetts Institution of Technology created this one-of-a-kind video game to help us grasp what we'll see and feel when we approach the speed of light. Why is the game set in a bizarre town full of huge mushrooms and masked cultists? Don't even bother asking. The major point here is that this game shows all of the impacts of nearing the speed of light, without requiring the player to acquire speed. In virtual space, light itself slows slower. It's the same thing with each orb you gather. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, you go 3,000 kilometers per second quicker, and as soon as you hit 20% of the speed of light, your surroundings begin to change dramatically, with everything in front of you becoming noticeably brighter and more purple. And if you glance back at that speed, you'll see a desolate crimson landscape. What exactly is going on? You're seeing the Doppler effect. At half the speed of light, it causes galaxies further away from Earth to redden and fade, while galaxies closer to Earth, such as Andromeda, seem more purple. The Doppler effect will provide you with infrared and ultraviolet vision, thereby transforming your vacation into an acid trip. And if you tilt your head right or left, the spectrums will shift in real time. In the real world, outside of this adorable bunch, you'd be dead by then. Scientists are accustomed to referring to space as a vacuum, although this is not totally accurate. Of course, one cannot breathe there, yet outer space is not devoid of life. And I'm not referring to meteorites between Earth and the Moon. Each cubic meter of so-called vacuum holds up to 10 million atoms, each of which will transform into an invisible bullet. The stunning purple shift will not be the only thing you witness as you accelerate towards Mars at 20% of the speed of light. There will also be some beautiful explosions on the surface of your spaceship. Each such explosion caused by a single heavy atom, such as oxygen, is for the light of nuclei of hydrogen, the most prevalent element in space. They'll puncture the covering, transforming the inside of your spaceship into a radioactive zone, more deadly than Chernobyl by the time you've reached half the speed of light. On the positive side, colliding with a mote of dust will be equivalent to a thermonuclear bomb detonation. While scientists aim to employ protective screens in front of a spaceship to avoid colliding with single atoms, there is no such protection against a cosmic dust particle. You will not be able to go to Mars in 10 minutes unless you do it at your own risk. You want to attempt to rush from the solar system's boundaries to the interstellar medium. The Voyager space probes are now exploring the planet with data from their sensors. Scientists discover that a cubic meter there has just 1,000 to 100,000 atoms, which is little. So, suppose we build a very thin spacecraft and then erect a conic shield in front of it to protect its coating from multiple explosions. We might even take a chance in this cosmic wager and attempt to travel faster than half the speed of light. All that will be left to do is pray. We don't come across any renegade particles, but as we accelerate like this, we'll be in for far more unexpected and severe consequences. So what will happen if we try to reach or even exceed the speed of light? To begin, let's return to the MIT game and gather more orbs for research. At 80% of the speed of light, the tremendously brilliant Doppler spot makes looking forward difficult. It's as if someone burnt through the fabric of space with a massive cigar, yet you don't want to look back. All you'll see there is an all-consuming blackness following you. You see, at this point, it's so hard for ordinary light to keep up with you from your point of view, it's turning into invisible radio waves. But the most unusual effect of approaching the speed of light will only reveal itself if we turn the Doppler effect off. It resembles a sci-fi jump drive. Distant objects become even further away. The scenery expands as you race into your objective, 
but the relativity theory says it should all be different. Einstein felt that an observer on board a ship nearing the speed of light should be able to see everything in front of them. For such a traveller, the Earth will shrink and flatten, appearing as a disk rather than an orb. Yes, Flatlanders, your moment has come. Einstein is on your side, but he made one mistake. According to the same relativity theory, when you approach the speed of light, time slows dramatically for you. This implies that photons from various portions of the things in front of you get into your eyes with a substantial delay. That's why the view is so long, but Einstein made sure we didn't notice. According to the relativity theory, the closer our spaceship is to the speed of light, the heavier it will be. The reason for this is that the energy we utilize for acceleration converts to mass, and calculations suggest that the spaceship will weigh twice as much at 90% of the speed of light. This implies it will require more energy to accelerate, but it will gain mass as a result. To cut a long tail short, Einstein is unstoppable, whether you're a person or a ship. If you have any mass, it's physically impossible to reach and much less exceed the speed of light. But what about all the news stories about astronomers and physicists observing something that has broken beyond the light barrier? This tiny spot is one of the most ancient galaxies known. Scientists believe it is 13.4 billion years old. Yet its red chef corresponds to a distance of 32 billion light years. That doesn't add up at all. Apparently, an entire galaxy with millions of stars flew away from us twice as fast as the speed of light, ending up so far away. So why can't we do the same thing? The answer lies in the anomalous behavior of the universe itself. If we expanded evenly like a soap bubble, we would only see space inside this small circle, the Hubble limit. However, practically the majority of things we see via telescopes are three times further distant from Earth's perspective. The Hubble limit is exceeded by up to 97% of galaxies, as though they had broken beyond the light barrier, but in reality, their outstanding speed is due to the gap between galaxies, which is expanding at an increasing rate. It doesn't have enough mass to obey Einstein's principles, but it does have neutrinos, which are subatomic particles. There is mass, although a minuscule amount. In 2011, scientists working on the OPERA experiment with the Large Hadron Collider witnessed a neutrino beam traveling at 307,000 km per second faster than light. This sparked outrage among experts. Although it was short-lived, it turned out that the scientists had just tightened a loose junction on one of the wires. Although scientists are unconcerned about a minor break in the light barrier, they have long been watching a supermassive black hole in the center of the M87 galaxy. Six times, a plasma jet is emitted. This is the speed of light. Strangely, Einstein's findings are only confirmed by such faster-than-light jets. In reality, the plasma jet moves at just 85% of the speed of light, and two factors make it appear to be quicker. One of the relativistic consequences indicated in Einstein's theory is our viewing angle and the appearance of warped time. But should we defy his principles and attempt to attain the speed of light in our unscientific spaceship? This will be seen in complete darkness. It will persist forever since the time dilation effect becomes limitless at the speed of light. In other words, at the speed of light, any traveler like Han Solo and Carbonite will be frozen alive in an instant. But is there really no hope of breaking this ice? Seeking to exceed the speed of light? Scientists have developed a few smart tactics, but beware of paradoxes if you try to utilize them. In reality, it already exists. A completely scientific technique of traveling from Earth to the nearest star system. In the mid-1990s, scientist Sergei Krasnikov proposed employing a spaceship equipped with a unique energy drill and tunnel space tunnels, with warped space-time to reach Alpha Centauri in four days rather than four years. Krasnikov, of this caliber, to allow regular spaceships to travel between stars in hours rather than days. But what if we took a superluminal tunnel almost at the same time as Krasnikov? Miguel A1 QBA, a Mexican physicist, was born in 1994. While watching the Star Trek series, I got a thought. The Starship Enterprise utilizes a warp engine to bend space and travel faster than light. A1 QBA also remembers distant galaxies that appear to be traveling faster than the speed of light. Eventually, create a real-world warp engine 
The engine employs a unique technique to decrease the space ahead and enlarge it behind. The pressure differential forms a warp space bubble, which may potentially move a hundred times faster than light without defying Einstein's postulates. A moving starship, on the other hand, will effectively stay in the same area without acquiring extra relativistic mass. So why haven't we constructed our own USS Enterprise? We've at least drilled a network of Grazhnikov tunnels. The trouble is that it is gasoline. Both of these initiatives necessitate the use of negative energy. It's a mathematical conundrum that only exists in physics equations right now. Although one of them, German physicist Erich Lentz, devised a method of avoiding the unusual fuel catch and creating a very comparable war bubble, he did it using ordinary energy. Although there is a catch, in order to accelerate a spaceship to speeds faster than light, hundreds of Jupiters must be used as fuel and I don't recall the USS Enterprise devouring planets prior to its warp leap. However, NASA is serious about developing a warp ship one day, as long as fresh discoveries can dramatically reduce the engine's demand. Simultaneously, a group of academics from the University of Adelaide have spent many years working on alternate solutions to Einstein's equations that would remove the light speed constraint. Their preliminary results are promising. So, what will prevent us from exceeding the speed of light warnings? You've entered a realm of mind-bending contradictions. Here you have it. Your spaceship blasting out the unending darkness at the speed of light, attempting to gain, say, an extra 60,000 kilometers per second. But what a tragedy. Once you reach the speed of light, further acceleration causes it to go backwards. But that doesn't imply you're going back in time. It's simply that you're really bright. Acceleration quickly becomes a normal slowing. This is exactly what occurs when a negative sign is added to a mathematical calculation. As a result, any new effort to travel faster than the speed of light would inevitably fail. Instead of traveling at the speed of light, you'll find yourself slamming your head against a wall. Should I add that massive overloads will turn everyone on board a spaceship into jelly? In fact, there won't be any jelly left. Photons, you see, are more than just light particles. Atoms are continuously absorbing and emitting energy and altering their energy levels. Simply, photons serve as messengers in a variety of chemical processes. You don't even tip them, yet they assist electrons to form stronger molecular connections. If you try to travel faster than the speed of light, these photon carriers will abandon you. And the matter that makes up your spaceship, and you, will be unable to interact with each other. What happens next is unknown, according to physicists. You'll either become a small cloud of dust or explode with the force of a hundred atomic bombs, or both at the same moment. The photon paradox will be the final nail in the coffin of your goal of traveling faster than the speed of light. But what if we try to persuade the cosmos to give us a more modest but equally desired alternative? If we can't travel at the speed of light, let's at least communicate with pals who live near other stars in real time. Is that also dangerous? At first look, physics appears to be promising. In September 2022, researchers at the United States Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory reported that they had surpassed the speed of light. They were able to accelerate photon waves in plasma to 390,000 kilometers per second by using a specific arrangement of strong lasers. That is 30% quicker than the speed of photons. Does this imply that every smartphone will have a superluminal Wi-Fi signal? Not so fast. The hitch is that it was the waves of photons that moved faster than light in this experiment, not the photons themselves. It resembles a water ripple generated by a drop. Even when waves are rapidly spreading out, the water molecules within them barely move. This implies that the new faster-than-light waves cannot carry data. They can only astonish the receiver by their own quickness. Aside from that, the method will not work in space. It necessitates thick, hot plasma. Science is aware of an unusual quantum effect that is unconcerned with any of this. It serves as the foundation for the technology, and the characters in the Mass Effect game series utilized it to converse over long distances in real time. This is an exoplanet that is similar to Earth. Proxima b is around four light years distant from Earth. We're quite likely to populate it in the future, and getting there in a regular spaceship will take a long time. You won't have to wait four years to contact your settlement friend. 
On Earth, you open an envelope carrying the first part of the communication, and some unknown quantum force instantaneously opens an envelope containing the second portion for your buddy on Proxima. That happens far quicker than light travels, so even though Einstein despised such long distance communication, quantum entanglement was granted the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2022 for convincing confirmation of the phenomenon's existence. Whenever you use it to entangle two particles, then if the first particle changes its state, the state of the second one becomes instantaneously known, regardless of obstacles or distances. But there is one problem. To enable immediate communication, two particles must be entangled on Earth, with one of them delivered to you. Finally, measure its state at a previously agreed moment, but the message will only be meaningful if you and your friend agree in advance on what you want to say to each other. Simply put, just opening quantum entangled envelopes doesn't provide enough context for communication. Besides, when you open the envelopes once, you'll break their quantum link and won't be able to repair it in mass effect. The difficulty was overcome with the use of fictional particles that stayed entangled regardless of what happened, but this merely produced a new dilemma. I'll make certain that this is just between us. Thank you, Commander. I'm joking. I'll go inform the rest of the galaxy what we've done. Commander Shepard, I'm afraid I have some unpleasant news for you. Do you see it? A casual conversation with friends may have ended in the commander inadvertently killing the universe. They were anxiously trying to save to comprehend why quicker than communication is so perilous. Let us consult Hermann Minkowski, a German professor who taught algebra to Albert Einstein himself. We'll look at his diagrams, which are a simplified portrayal of space and time. The horizontal line represents space, the vertical line represents time, and the yellow diagonal at an angle of exactly 45 degrees presents the well-known light barrier that separates Earth from Proxima b. Your acquaintance will travel in an extremely fast spaceship that does not surpass the speed of light, ensuring they do not breach the yellow light barrier line. But while they're on your road, you decide to utilize your superluminal transmitter to instantaneously express your comments on the season finale of your favorite show. From your perspective, the message will only pass through the light barrier horizontally. Remember that, but your friend is not pleased. They planned to binge watch the episode once they arrived to Proxima B. So they used their faster than light transmitter to beg you to quiet up and keep your spoilers to yourself. You may be injured, but the cosmos will be so irritated that it will physically implode. Your friend's immediate faster than light transmission reached Earth before you could, but why did it penetrate the light barrier at an angle rather than horizontally? It's not a mistake. Your pal is merely on board a ship reaching the speed of light, experiencing the impacts of space temporal warping that we discussed earlier. As a result, the straight horizontal line on their Minkowski diagram really travels across Earth's past. So they'll warn you to stop leaking your show spoilers even before you've finished writing anything. But what if you don't? Send a message to a buddy. You will not receive their response, which you have already read. No, you did not create a time machine. You've just created a paradox that, according to some experts, has the potential to kill FaceTime itself. The speed of light, despite its name, has nothing to do with light. It is the greatest speed of causality at which portions of the cosmos may interact in relation to its enormous vastness. It is extremely modest, yet there is nothing we can do when we attempt to breach the barrier of causality. It's not for nothing that humans go blind from dazzling hues, grain unlimited mass, and freeze in time when quantum connections break. The cosmos goes to tremendous efforts to defend itself from the paradoxes that destroy space and time. But what if we're more cautious? In principle, we could send immediate communications to other stars without sending information that would break causality in any manner. That is, we would have had to discuss something really broad, discuss the weather or complain about Einstein being correct once more. However, if we were to breach the light barrier on our own and embark on a superluminal voyage around the galaxy, we would have to wipe the traveler's memory unless they speak too much when they get at their destination and destroy the universe. So what's your take on this? Would you want to go to the stars if you could? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.